and let the day take away the show. Oh, day. Everyone, give it up for them. Thank you. This reminds me of having this reminds me of the last time I did rock and roll on stage. It was also the first time I did rock and roll on stage. I guess this one goes better, shall we? Okay, yeah. Um, okay, now this one is called The Last Great Hardware Show. I can't remember why. Um, I think basically, we'll get there in a minute, right? Okay, or actually I wasn't supposed to be here. Adnan, where are you? Is Adnan here? Yeah. There's Adnan. He was supposed to do the bloody talk. Last week I got a call from Warren saying, Hey, Adnan, can't do it. Can you do the bloody and I did what I always do. Quietly I said, oh shit, but actually but I said, yeah, okay. Um, never mind. Okay. How do you progress? Okay, so it is held at the NUS School of Computing at Dev TTY USB serial. Not con one, isn't it? Sorry. Just a little joke. Not funny. Okay, so who am I? You probably all know, I'm Dave Appleton. Um, I wrote my first computer program in 1968. I like saying that because most people were around in 1968. <laughs> you were, weren't you? Oh, bugger me, I'm dead now. <laughs> uh, basically, I've been working in R&D in various places from mainframe companies to all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, since 1980, I've been here. I've been working in startups in Singapore since 1986. I've actually been here since 82. And I live in a sort of twilight zone between hardware and software. And depending on who you are when I talk to you, I'll shift the balance a bit one way or the other just to keep safe, right? Um, okay, my hobby is getting people interested in new things and actually pursuing new things myself. Um, you know, I like learning things, new things every year. Right, so what are we going to do? Um, yeah, I'm going to tell you some long-winded stories, probably, because I tend to get distracted. I can't keep on topic. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, I, if, we, if I happen to remember any, which I'm getting a bit old, I might not, you know, I'll tell you, I might make a few really bad jokes. Um, I'll talk very fast about what you're going to see and hope you don't notice that it doesn't work. That's, it's all written up there. Why am I reading it? You can see it. I can go home now, right? No. <laughs> Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to do some basic electronics. Um, because I'm guessing that, okay, in this room, we've probably got quite a few people who are. Okay, how many people actually mess around with hardware at all? Quite a few. I like it. How many people have had any training in hardware? Far less, right? Um, one of the things I was actually horrified was when. Someone I knew was taking a course at Singapore Poly, and I had a look over his at the online notes, and the lecturer gave him an example of something to do which was absolutely, totally wrong. Right? And I'm going to demo, I'm going to sort of like show you that in a bit because I want to get I want to cover some real basic stuff because if you want to hack with electronics. Sometimes it's good to understand a few bits of basics. I'm not going to go very far in any direction because this, as I said, is going to be the last great hardware show from me. Um, then we're going, to, we're going to sort of like head in that. As part of that, I'm going to use some very cheap stuff to build some real equipment. Right? Real technical equipment that if you bought it 20 years ago would cost you a whole lot of money. And I rigged one up last night in about, well, I actually rigged it up a, um, a few months ago and put it in my block, but I sort of like threw it back together again last night in about half an hour, which is good really, because I started doing the notes at 2 a.m. last night, so anyway, um, we'll see if we can make some noise and we'll see if we can give you some tips on how you can get started if you haven't started already. Is that fair enough? Yes. Great stuff, right. So, leading up to this. Uh, what happened? In 2011, I met Michael Cheng. Are you here, Michael? No, he's doing all He's listening to the software stuff. Okay, anyway. <laughs> uh, he's talking, isn't he? <laughs> I'm safe. Okay, I met him at Hackerspace, and as a result of that, I started teaching some Arduino classes. And there weren't so many people there. Anybody here? A few of you were in my early Arduino classes, though, right? Um, in 2012, I did my first... Geek camp, and I was the only person doing hardware. 
Last year, there were two of us. This year, it is amazing, isn't it? The number of hardware subjects. And they're all pretty awesome. And that um, oh yeah, last year we did our talk, our talk on the Raspberry Pi, and I've met Adnan, who did the, who, who's got this fantastic little board, the Raspi Juice, which gives you a power supply for your Raspberry Pi, and servo controllers, and it's like sticking an Arduino on top. You can program it to do all sorts of other things as well. Right, so you can have like real-time hardware control and computing power. Right, it's a magic little board. We did a presentation together last year, but this year we've got tons of groups, maker spaces. Like we had oh, we have hacker space. That was it. Right when I started this. Now we've got maker spaces. We've got groups everywhere where people are getting together. They're hacking software. They're hacking hardware, and there are some pretty awesome people out here. Right. Right, I'm getting a bit shiny now, so I'm going to let them take over. That's why it's the last great hardware show. So, okay, I'm going to start off with some basic electronics. And if you study electronics, you're going to yawn, right? We're going to talk about Ohm's Law, right? I used to be a lecturer at Singapore Poly. I did two, two years teaching. Okay, last one. Here we go. Elect Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law tells you the relationships between current, voltage, and resistance. What it says is V equals IR. What does that really mean? Well, if, you've got a, if you're feeling really energetic and, you, and, and you're swimming through water, it means you can go quite fast. Like your speed through the water is like the current. However, if you're swimming through treacle, which has got far more resistance, you go quite slowly, even though you started with the same amount of energy. Right? So, if you've got a certain voltage and, and, and you want to limit the current, you stick in a big resistor. If you don't want to limit the current so much, you stick in a small resistor. We use resistors to limit the current so things don't blow up. Right? Well, the first very important. We can also, if we've got a current flowing, we can use a resistor to cause a voltage drop. Right? If you're too energetic, you know, if you if you had like 20 coffees already, which I know, I know it's a bit mild for some of us, but if you've only had 20 coffees and you're, and you're shaking a bit, what do you do? You go for a swim and then you calm down a bit because you've lost a bit of the energy, right? Same thing. You know, the resistor can drop your voltage if you've got a current flow, right? Um, and Ohm's law actually is the key to everything in electronics, right? Um, you couple that with basic power, which says that if you've got something that there's a current flowing through, therefore you have a voltage drop, you can calculate the amount of power given off. Right? V equals the voltage times the current. And what does that mean? It tells you how hot the thing gets. Right? Now in terms of something like an LED, that means if, an, if you know how much current the, the LED is going to be taking, but you too put too big a voltage on it, it'll take more current, it will blow up because it will get too hot. Yeah? That's why things blow up. Because you've got, you've got too much voltage or across it or too much current flowing, th flowing through it, which are actually the same thing. Right? So there we are. Um, there are calculations. I'm sure this will end up on the web you can, if you really want to see the calculations. And, um, you must be crazy, never mind. Okay, um, so why are we talking about this? Well, what we're going to build is a curve tracer. Right? Now, a curve tracer, for those of you who did electronics, you probably saw curve tracers. In the old days, they used to have them built into really expensive oscilloscopes. If anybody here has ever worked in a semicon factory, you've bought really expensive curve tracers so that when the chips failed, you could check each individual pin to find out why it failed. Okay. Um, and we're going to look at a couple of things that we use without thinking, you know, where we don't really think much about using it. Um, and then hopefully, yeah, it's up there. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make sure you understand it a little bit more so that you do things a bit more informed, basically, so that you don't blow things up so that you don't make some of the mistakes that people I know have made. So, if you want to find out about the, the curve tracer, 
Um, originally, I put together a quick, a quick demo curve trace, and I put it on my blog, which is there. And I did it for doing transistors, right? Um, and basically, it was used to demonstrate that the well, I had a number of different curves. You could show the voltage relationship, the current relationship. On the current relationship, it shows you that the current through the collector is a, a multiple of the current through the base, right? So typically, it's something like about 100. That's why they use amplifiers. If you put um, resistors and things in the circuit, you can make it into a voltage amplifier. Right, so I built this thing, which this was the circuit, it was incredibly simple, right? It used one Arduino, three resistors. Uh, well, I, I mean, technically, on the left, the resistors on the left-hand side go with the transistors to be part of the circuit, so you can't even call them part of the tracer, right? On the right-hand side, we've got one resistor which goes with the, the guy on the left-hand side, which is a digital potentiometer, which... I used because that came in before the before the digital before a digital to analog converter. It came in first. I used it, right? Um, so I'm using that to allow me to control the voltage. I can't even point to it, can I? Oh God! Okay, allow me. Um, oh, lasers! I never. Which one? That one? Oh, magic! Right. So it allows us. That's the digital potentiometer. It's controlled by the Arduino using a, pr a protocol called SPI, right? Which is basically a sequential interface, which you can plug into lots of different things, right? And what it, what's that one? Okay, it allows us to control the voltage at this point on this pin here by putting basically, it becomes like a, a knob which you are turning by the computer, right? So I can control that voltage there. I then monitor this voltage here, this voltage here. Now, if I monitor the voltage across a resistor, I can deduce the... Okay. I see we weren't paying attention, right? <laughs> you're, gonna, you're all going to stay back for detention after this. Um, <laughs> right, so, yeah, you can deduce the current by knowing the voltage across a resistor, as long as you know the resistance, right? V equals IR. Because I wanted to know the current going into the base. Right? So I've, so I've got the current going into the base, and I've got another resistor there, where I know the voltage on top is 5 volts, the voltage on the bottom is being read back there. Therefore, I can deduce the current going into the collector. Well, that was simple. So I then wrote a very small program that would sweep this voltage here from 0 to 5 volts and I just read all the values in and I plotted them and I got some curves like this. So what have we got? The I can't see this. Still can't see it. Um, <laughs> the first one has to be current to current, doesn't it? Um, Base, base current on that side to, uh, base current there to collector current, is it? Yes. Right, so basically you can see that your transistor, the collector current goes up linearly with the base current for a certain period of time, right? But it's bigger, right? So I, can't, I can't see what the multiplication factor was, but it was quite a bit bigger. Um, so we managed to get a good current multiplication, but it tails off. Why does it tail off? Well, it tails off because your power supply can't actually give you more current than that. Right? Because you've got a resistor there, and that resistor finally is going to stop giving you any more current. Right? And these are the other, basically these curves also show you how it's being used as a voltage amplifier, or a current to voltage amplifier. So. You can have a look at that, you can build one. And that leads us to what we actually use transistors for in circuits like this. Um, if you take a PWM port on the Arduino, stick it into a resistor, stick it into a transistor, you can put a motor up there with a diode for reasons which will be secret um, to, protect, to protect the transistor, right? 
Um, you can build that and it allows you to control a motor because you've got current amplification going on there. Right? And actually on one of the Arduino forums, somebody asked about this. He said, I've been told I've got a transistor and a resistor, there's these things to do, and a potentiometer to control the speed. How would I do it? So I, get, I, I gave him a couple, of, a couple of clues, and he came up with this. So where, that's your, that's your circuit. You're using the transistor to amplify the current to drive the motor. And the, and the, the resistor that controls the speed is no way connected to the motor. Right? What it's doing is, you turn it, and the Arduino reads the voltage, and then says, oh, okay, I'll, I'll set the speed to that instead. Right? So he built a nice, a nice little thing there, that's his circuit. Uh, who was it? Hassan Mohammed. Yeah, we chatted a few times here, then it was good. Right, but I'm not going to do transistors. I'm going to do something a little bit simpler. I'm going to do LEDs. Um, so, LED. we all know what LEDs are, don't we? Yeah, if we know what LEDs are, these are these things that go flashy, 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 yeah? I, don't, I like that, that's really cool. Um, okay, so basically an LED is something where if you stick a current through it, it will light up. If you stick more current through it, it will also, it will, I mean you can stick three amps through an LED if you want to and it will light up. But it will light up for, for maybe a few microseconds, right? You have to limit the current through your LED. Now, typically, we know that an LED may have about one volt across it, depending upon the LED, right? And so, if, there, if you've got a five volt supply, then you know that you've got to drop four volts across a resistor, and maybe you want 20 milliamps, so you do the calculations, and you say, okay, let's put in a 200 ohm resistor. Give it or take, right? It would be pretty bright, and depending upon the LED, some, some LEDs are pretty good at 5 milliamps or, or less. I mean, I always used to use 1K resistors, it's perfectly fine. Right? Now, you can actually do a curve. Oh, a curve. Using exactly the same, or pretty much the same circuit, but with a slightly different plotting mechanism, you can actually just plot it. And I can, I can show you this live because I, I rigged it up. Um, are you interested? Do you want to see it live? I've got an LED there. No, I've got a yellow LED here. It might work. Let's, let's have a try, shall we? Can I do this without stopping that? No, I can't. Stop that. Oh, processing now. This guy. That should do it. Right. So if I hit. Now. You'll have to watch very carefully. Do you want to hit this one instead? Get, get the little... It's tricky. Do you want the graph? I will do it twice. You catch the LED first and then we can go the other way. If I am incredibly lucky, which is not the only way to go, when we press this... It's okay, we'll come back to this one afterwards. The LED will light up and it gets dimmer. You can't see a thing, can you? Yeah. I thought you were looking at that. You can't see anything. Oh, okay. Okay, come back to this one, if you can't catch that. Okay. In that case... Oh, hang on, let me just... just no, it's possible. You, you want to show them this, right? Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, okay. Oh. Clever. Uh -huh. Oh, I see you. I see you. So I'm just trying that. Okay, this. this. Okay, basically I'm drawing a graph using a language called processing. Okay. okay, we're drawing a graph using a language called processing. Now Bjorn, you can remember the processing class we did, right? It's incredibly easy to use. We, we, did, we did one class for processing and we sort of like, we ended up writing a, well, I think it was a pretty cool game, but it was a sort of like semi-cool game, yeah? Um, anyway, okay, so here we are. So if I tell it to start again, it, there we go, it's, draw, it's plotting the graph, but at the same time, if you look down here, I'll do it one more time, you can see the LED goes on, bright, and it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, because I'm reducing the, vol the voltage 
into the resistor, which means I'm therefore reducing the current as well. Yeah? Ah, do it again. I'll do it again. Here you go. That one's for you. That's only for the camera, isn't it? They don't get this here. Okay. Eyeballs. I've got plenty of different LEDs here. We, I could do this all day, but it really wouldn't be fair to you. So, let, okay. So let's return to the. Yeah. Right. Let's so let's return back to this. Hopefully, at the same place. Right. Okay. So this is is produced by sweeping a voltage through a resistor into the base of the earth, into the one side of the LED, and measuring the current going through it. Right, so we measured the voltage across the LED and the current going through it. And I d I've got several LEDs here, and I did it with a couple of them. And you can see one of them, well, where, where the curve goes up is where the current starts conducting. That's when it starts giving off light. Right? Um, so one of them starts, starts emitting light at about 1.6 volts, and the other one's about 1.8, 1.9 volts. Right? All LEDs are not the same. Different colour LEDs typically have quite a significant difference in turn on voltage. Right? So, implications of this I have had people, they, they, they say, okay, well, I want to turn on a whole row of LEDs, and I'm just going to put, they just put one resistor for the whole lot. They just calculate how much current they need for all of the LEDs, like on the left. And they put one resistor. And that typically has got one of two results. One or two of the LEDs are a lot brighter than all the rest, if you have got a few LEDs. Or if you've got hundreds of LEDs, some of the LEDs start blowing up. And that is because, if we were to try and go backwards, right? Um, when you put the resistor in, it's going to start going. The, the one on the right hand side is going to say, I'm going to conduct, it's going to take all of the current from the, through the resistor, and the other one's going to be turned off. And that, look at the steepness of that curve, it goes way, way high before you've got anywhere near the point the other one turns on. So literally one LED is going to steal all of the current, and if you've got enough current there, it's going to go bang. And then, when that's happened, the next LED is going to turn on. And that will go back and think, yeah, yeah, bing, bing. It's very pretty. Um, not. Okay, uh, where would you... So, yeah, you don't do that, right? Each LED has to have its own resistor, its own, limit, its own current limit. Um, okay, another mistake that I have seen people do. Um, now... This is the one I saw the Singapore Poly lecturer say, right? He gave a circuit and showed you wiring an LED down to ground from a TTL logic gate. Now TTL was, is logic which isn't used so much these days. Except if you want to do a little bit of hacking, wiring up a bit of logic, which we don't do so much because we've got Arduinos and CPUs and stuff. But if you have to, TTL is still quite useful. Um, and I've seen a Singapore Poly lecturer doing that. And I've also seen this, work, this being done in a $20,000 piece of equipment, and it caused that piece of equipment to fail periodically. Right? The one on, so the one on the left or the one on the right, which one's correct? I know Adnan knows, who else knows? You know, don't you? TTL. Yeah, TTL. The one on the left is dangerous. The one on the right is great. Why is that? Why is this green? Oh, never mind. I can't see your head now. Okay, basically, if you, when you start working with ICs and things, sometimes you have to go back to the data sheet. Right? And in the data sheet for TTL devices, I may have got the uh, a slight dip wrong numbers, but basically it says VOH. When the chip is saying I am high, it is giving you 2.4 volts or higher. And it can give, but it can only give you 0.4, sorry, what is it, about 16 microamps. 16 microamps will not light up an LED. When it's giving you a low, it, it is below 0.4 of a volt, and it can draw in 
16 milliamps. Hang on, sorry, the one on the bottom is supposed to say IOL. I'm an idiot, ignore. The one on the bottom is IOL. Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> Remember, these notes were prepared at 2 a.m. I'm not going to say 2 a.m. in the morning because 2 a.m. is always in the morning. Right? Okay, these notes were prepared. Okay, so basically, the, a TTL output can draw in a whole load of current, but it can only put out a little bit of current. And if you, try, if you put your LED to ground to a pin, it will still light up. But you're not getting your 2.4 volts. Because you're drawing so much current that you're, you're compromising the chip. And what is more, if that chip is being used for other critical signals, because you're drawing current from the inside of the chip, the chip is not working properly anymore. And this is what's happened in that piece of test equipment. They have one LED powered from a pin to ground, and another very critical signal was going through the same chip and was occasionally getting distorted. Okay. Um, you, know, you, won't keep your, you may or may not damage the gate, but you, could, you can certainly damage the rest of the circuit, right? Okay, so you sink, you learn the source. So it is very important for you to check your data sheets, right? If you're working on the Raspberry Pi, you've got one thing. Right? Raspberry Pi is, is, what, is a 3.3 volt device. The Arduino, you can get 3.3 volt Arduinos or 5 volt Arduinos. The Arduino, most pins can source or sync up to, up to 40 milliamps. The Raspberry Pi is not terribly well documented. Okay. Oh, end of part one. How am I doing for time, guys? I've got three minutes left. It looks like it's probably the end of the world in that case. Um, we, might, we might end up not doing the thing. Okay, how can you get started? What to get... Okay, if anybody in this room thinks that they are too old to start something new, that is my dear departed father. At the age of 73, I gave him his first computer in 1986. It was a CPM computer, no graphic interface, all command line, and he used it regularly from the time I gave it to him. Until he got another one, another one, another one, right? And if he can do that, I'm sure, I'm sure that you can, you can keep learning well into your 70s, guys. Um, so. Okay, if you're a software guy, the Raspberry Pi could be a really good place to start. And the demos won't happen because there's not enough time, um, which is probably good. <laughs> um, so we'll ignore the web-based jukebox. One of the most fantastic things about the Raspberry Pi is you don't even know, need to know programming to do hardware. You can actually control the I.O. pins from the command line. Right? You just write to a couple of locations, write, write things to two different locations, literally echo you know, out to the direction and then a one or a zero to the value. But hey, you can control the pins. And I did have that working over here. but. Given we're running out of time and the screen is sideways, I think we'll probably avoid that. Um, what I'll do instead is I will add some of that into the notes and get it online. I think that's probably the easiest thing. Right? Uh, yeah. So, basically, for those people who did not put their hands up at this point, given that you obviously have indicated that you, that you are dying to, to do some hardware by actually subjecting yourself to listening to me for three quarters of an hour. Foolish mortals. Um, <laughs> what is actually stopping you now? Okay, basically you can, you can go out and buy a Raspberry Pi. If most of your software guys, hey, the Pi is great, it's a little Linux machine. I mean, it's going to be a little bit slow, but it's dead cheap, right? It's about 45 bucks for the Pi. These days, even the SD cards are less than 10 bucks, right? So, yeah, what's stopping you? There are loads of tutorials. 
there are loads of user groups, right? I mean, to start off with, we've got the generic places like makerspaces and hackerspaces. We've got Raspberry Pi and Co. We've got Singapore Arduino group, Arduino for beginners on, on Facebook, where you can, right? The Singapore ones, we actually, you can go to physical meetups. You can meet people and get together and do crazy projects. Um, yeah, you, you can do a whole load of things. I've got a feeling if I press this, there's going to be nothing else. Let's check. There's nothing else. All right. Thank you, Dave. Oh, I'll use this one. We have Q&A, and uh, the first question that I have, and I'm very, very sure most of the audience has, is can we have the demo, please? Can is that most of your question as well? Really? Can we have the demo, please? Yes? Yes. yes. Oh my God. Can we have the demo, please? Really? Yes. Okay, does somebody want to <laughs> hold the screen so I can see it? Um, okay, let's see what we can do. Um, oh, by the way, one thing you will notice I mean, I'm sure Adnan gets this these days. Things, things are getting smaller and smaller. How do you like my new glasses? <laughs> they are... I can see anything with those. Okay, we need this. Which way does it go? It goes that way. This one? Thank you, yes. Now let's see if we can figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. I can't remember what I'm doing. I'm really... The best I can. Um... Um, to start off with, we had a Python script, if I remember correctly. Where is it? It's lint.py. Oh, lint.py. Of course, it's got the wrong name, but never mind. Do I have the shell script here as well? No. Okay, I'm probably going to die when it comes to the shell script. Anyway, never mind. So let's try, let's try, try with a little Python script. Yeah, it's not just the LEDs coming on off. It's really not impressive, right? So if you want to see, you can come by and gather here, I guess. Does that work? I don't know if it works. For those of you who are interested. And no, of it's not working. Show, but, uh, if you're no interested to see the LED, you can gather here. Running. Oh, okay. Let's try that, try that for Sulo, shall we? So, if you're interested to, if you're interested to see hey. the LED, Linking in front. Uh, it's supposed to go off, isn't it? Come in front yeah, it goes off. Near Dave on the stage okay. with Bjorn or Justin. Yeah, that, that was terribly exciting, wasn't it? Uh, it took me a long time to figure out why the ID for Python is called idle. Um, <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> yeah, well, and it also takes a long time for the load. There we go. Um, it's in Python. How do we open it? Um, I have a recent one of it, music. I have got one called music. Anyway, open recent. Let the mod. I hate this. Let the oh. Okay, if you have a look at it, it's like. You can go up on the stage, stand beside Bjorn. Okay, basically, this is the code it takes to do it. And literally, all you're doing is you're telling it the. Okay, what are we doing? We're telling it how we want to do the numbering. We set it as an output. And then we turn it off, or turn it on and off. It's that simple. And if we, I think, can we run it? I don't think, can I run it from here? Ooh, look at that. Uh, I, really I think we just do that. I've never tried running it from here. Cam problem. No, it doesn't do that. We have to do it from here again. Do it again. There you go. It goes on oh. and off. Sorry, it's looking but the, way. the interesting thing about this, which... Do we have Adnan? Can you give me a hand with this? Make sure I don't do something stupid. Adnan's coming. I'm going to ask Adnan to help us on this one. Um, pin 18. How does it? How does it, how does it I've forgotten how it works. Right, we're just doing it from the command line. It's how um, to do what? Turn an LED on. It's like echo. Oh yeah, the, 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 the uh, Oh, hang on, we, hang on, we, we can just do a pseudo. Whoops. Hi, Echo. Beyond. Oh, this is about, about as much hardware I do touching it. <laughs> 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 
Dev slash class. Ah, oh, oh, no, okay, we've got to set the pin first. Yes. It's about, so, so it's about a five line thing, isn't it? No, uh. Um, we've got, we've got to echo 18, 18 first, isn't it? <laughs> um, where is it? Sis, is it? Yeah, sis, class. I think that's the one you guys know. Where else? Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, then you can just echo. 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 18. 18. Oh, there's 18 into here, isn't it? I can't remember, dear. Yeah, no. oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll give it a try. How do you export a GPI open? I think it's echo 18 to... to I don't remember it. I, okay. I, I can remember let, let, it later. Let me try again. Huh? Uh, echo 18... Whoops. 18 to smash... I forget how to... Slash... Class slash GPIO. No? That, yeah, you do yeah, the echo. Yeah, yeah, into. You're quite right. Thank you. Right, you echo that into there. Is it direct? You just GPIO export and then. Oh, okay. yeah, bone bone. Which one's that? This I'm is not sure if that's from command line though. Uh, is, is, I've, got is it, there a, I've got it in my other SD card. Is there a binary called GPIO export? No, 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 no. It's, it's, there's just an echo. Oh, just an echo. Oh, oh it's just this class GPIO export. And then you echo the number to it. Ah, okay, so yeah, yeah. Echo quotes, 18. Uh, you echo 18, that's yeah. it. Smash export. And then to sys class right. GPI export. Export. Right. And you echo the, to, the, to the direction the as well. Echo. GPIO oh. slash GPIO 18 Out slash direction. direction. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sys slash class slash GPIO dot. No, 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 and then we echo a. Okay, here we go. Don't look at the LED. It's shine, ladies and gentlemen. If if we are lucky, this is going to do it. Ta-da! There we go. Three lines to turn it on. And having done all of that, it's just a single line to turn it back on. So you can actually write batch files, you know, whatever you call them these days, batch file script shell files, batch. shell scripts, batch. batches, or whatever you call them. Shell shots. Shell yeah. shots. Shell shots. <laughs> shell shots. <laughs> to, hey, to, to, to turn on LEDs. <laughs> and you can do inputs as well. So you can actually sort of like take, you can read back pins as well. Okay. There we go. All right. I'm not doing the music. I'm Have not doing the music. music. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Uh, I guess that was the one and only question, and the audience wanted to see it, and I hope you learned something. Oh, I'm there. Give it up for Dave Appleton for the last day of our show. I still don't know why he's at the last day of our show. Maybe we should be doing this again. No, there are too many young guys. No, we need, we need people like you as well to tilt the balance, come on. We're just saying even old people can do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, if you want to hear my reply. <laughs> exactly, no excuse for the young, you know. If Dave can do it, so can you. Shut up. <laughs> there we go. Don't do hard work. <laughs> Lovely.